Yo, what's going on, but it's your boy Top Dog. <coughs> Sorry, I had a bit of a uh, something stuck in my throat. It's your boy Top Dog, really, or oh, really, dog. So today I'm coming back at you with a fishing guide. Me and my boy Darkty, by the way, hit him up. He's a real life friend of mine. Been friends with him for as long as I can remember. So tell him I sent you. Feel free to sub. You know, you know how it go. Anyway, let's get on with the fishing guide. So I'm going to go in order from easiest to hardest in my opinion, so let's start off with the easiest which is obviously splash tails, you don't need any sort of bait to catch them. The only thing you have to worry about is it being night to catch the sea foam splash tail and they come in five different variants, you have the base variant which is the ruby splash tail, the common variant which is the sunny splash tail, you have the indigo splash tail which is the uncommon variant, the rare variant being the umber splash tail and the sea foam being the uh, night variant. And these fish don't sell for very much. The only thing is worth selling is like an Umber Trophy splash tail that goes for 1.4k cook. So that's the only one I'd probably sell. So next up is Pondies. These are very, very similar to splash tails. Apart from you cannot catch them in the sea, you have to catch them in a pond in fresh water. And thank the Lord, splash tails cannot spawn. You will only catch Pondies. You don't even need bait to catch these, similar to splash tails, like I said. Uh, again, though, they're, they're not really worth very much. They come in five different variants. Again, you've got the charcoal pondy, which is the base variant, the orchard pondy, which is the common variant, the bronze pondy, which is uncommon variant, bright pondy, rare variant, moon sky pondy, which is the night variant. And ponds aren't very common in the Sea of Thieves. So I'm going to give you the list of islands of where all the um, all the ponds are. So you've got Crow's Nest Fortress, Devil's Ridge, Curse Water Shores, The Devil's First, Crescent Isle, Hidden Spring Keep, Mermaid's Hideaway, Kraken's Fall, and then Old Sailor's Isle. You're not going to fish there because that's the maiden voyage. And of course, Tribute Peak. So yeah, if you want to fish... Uh, no, Pondies don't spawn at Tribute Peak. I remember, there used to be a glitch to get Merrick's accolades. So yeah, again, the only fish that's worth selling is a trophy bright pondy because it's worth 1.4k cooked. Always cook your fish before you sell them. If you are going to sell them, it pretty much doubles the value of them. So yeah, anyway, let's move on. So now we're moving on to some fish. That some of them are actually worth selling. So as you can see, we're in the ancient isles. We're using leeches. We're getting ancient scales. If you don't know where to get bait, you can check any barrel, dig up randomly, or you can go to any merchant representative or hunter's call representative at a sea post and buy a bait crate. You get 50 of each bait. You won't need anything more. So anyway, ancient scales, they can just be caught anywhere in the ancient isles. So yeah, in, as long as you've got leeches on, you are going to catch ancient scales. But sunny splash tails, I uh, just splash tails in general can still spawn, I don't know why I said sunny. But again, they come in five different variants. It seems to be a trend that you get five fish per category. And some of these fish are worth selling, so I'm going to tell you the price of them also. An almond ancient scale, so if you sell it regular, cooked, 340 gold roughly. If you sell it cooked, the trophy, 850, I bet that could go up to 1,000. So it's probably worth selling all these fish as well. So that's the base event. Then you've got a sapphire ancient scale, which is the common variant that is sold for 450, the regular size, or 1,125 cook. So it probably could go up to 1.3k. It's only a rough estimate. And then you've got the smoke ancient scale, which is the uncommon variant. Again, this sells for 565 cooked, regular size, and then you've got 1,410 trophy. And then we have the rare variant which sells for regular cooked 4,500 and then trophy 11,250 gold and you know I'm talking about the burn ancient scale and then you've got the starshine ancient scale which sells for the same as the sapphire for 450 or 125 uh, for the trophy variant so these fish are actually worth selling if I'm going to be truly honest so you might as well sell them all because It'll give you rep. I don't really need to sell fish, only for commendations. So yeah, I use gems to level up my hunter's call. I'm lazy. I hate fishing, but I'm here. 
so be grateful. Next up is Plenty Fins. It's the exact same premise as the ancient scales, but you've got to be in the shores of Plenty and requires earthworms to catch these. They come in five different variants again. And from now on, I'm just gonna make this clear. When I talk about the prices of the fish, it is the fish cooked, cooked to perfection. And to cook your fish to perfection, you have to either, you cook it for, I believe it's 40 seconds if it isn't cooked and 90 seconds if it is cooked if it's a trophy fish even so yeah 40 seconds for a regular to be cooked and trophy fish 90 seconds sorry guys my bad i i don't know all this stuff off by heart i need to read my notes so anyway the olive plenty fin which is the base variant sells for 340 for the regular size and 850 for the trophy the amber uh, the amber plenty fin is the common variant and that sells for 450 regular and 1125 for the trophy the cloudy plenty fin sells for 565 regular or 1410 uh, trophy the bone dust plenty fin the rare variant sells for 4500 for the regular size and 11250 for the trophy size and the watery plenty fin obviously the night plenty fin you have to catch it at night time but you should know this by now is 450 regular and 1125 for the trophy variant and yeah it's, it's a nice nice fish to catch. It's, Shores of Plenty is probably like my favourite region in the whole game. So yeah, enjoy catching these beautiful fish. Next up is Wild Splashes. This is the last of what I like to call the easy section. So the Wild Splashes, again, like Plenty Fins, you need to use earthworms to catch these little... I was about to swear then, but I'm not. I'm family friendly now. To catch these little pesky fish, you need to use earthworms. So again... You have five variants, believe it or not. So you've got the base variant, which is a russet wild splash. It sells for 340 regular and 850 trophy. Sandy wild splash, which is the common variant, sells for 450 regular or 100, uh, 1,125 for the trophy variant. You have the ocean wild splash, the uncommon variant, which sells for 565 or 1,410 for the trophy variant. And you have the Muddy Wild Splash, which is the rare variant. It sells for 4,500 4, for the regular variant, and then 11,250 for the trophy variant. And finally, you have the Night variant, the Coral Wild Splash. That sells for 450 regular and 1,125 for the trophy. So the fish after this can be quite hard, and there is a risk of dying while fishing, and... The risk of breaking your chair over fish in Sea of Thieves. So yeah, enjoy. Okay, so Isle Hoppers. These are probably the most confusing fish to catch. So listen very, very closely. So the Moss Isle Hopper. There is five different, sorry. There's five different variants. Three normal that sell for the same. The rare variant and then the night variant. So listen up on how to catch all five variants. So the Moss Isle Hopper, sorry. I'll get into it now. So this can either be found at Ashen Reaches, Thieves Haven, Marauder's Ark, Lone Cove, Wanderer's Refuge or Ruby's Fall. Any of them islands, you just don't need bait, you don't need anything. You can just find them on the outskirts of the island by fishing. And then the Stone Isle Hopper can be found at Shipwreck Bay, Sharkbait Cove, Crooks Hollow, Sailor's Bounty, Cannon Cove or Fletcher's Rest. Same principle, no bait, just fish. And then the Honey Isle Hopper can be found at Discovery Ridge, Plunder Valley, Kraken's Fall, Sunken Grove, Crescent Isle and Devil's First. And now the Amethyst Isle Hopper can only be found at night time at Devil's Ridge, Smuggler's Bay, Mermaid's Hideaway, The Crooked Masts, Old Faithful Isle, Flintlock Peninsula or Snake Island. And then to catch the, Amethyst, uh, the Raven variant which is the quote unquote rare variant, you have to be at any island the Amethyst Isle Hopper can spawn, but during the day, so that's the only Isle Hopper that will spawn. You'll either get a Raven Isle Hopper, or you'll get Sunny Splash Tail. Uh, Splash Tail, sorry, I don't know why I keep saying Sunny. So yeah, you'll either get Splash Tails or the Raven Isle Hopper. Uh, again, I'd only sell the trophy variant of the Raven Isle Hopper, unless you're doing it for commendations. The trophy uh, the Raven Isle Hopper goes for 1,500 uh, 75 coins for the regular and then the trophy variant is 3940 gold so it's not really worth selling any other fish unless you're doing it for commendations like I am. Okay so next up is devil fish now this is the one you are most likely going to die trying to catch uh, we've had a few issues with that boat I had devil fish 
got hit by a fireball, lost it. Tragic times. But anyway, there's five different variants of devil's fish. You need to use grubs to catch these bad boys. So the base variant is the Ashen Devil Fish that sells for 340 regular, 850 trophy. You've got the sea, she sea Shell variant, which is the common variant, Seashell Devil Fish, and that sells for 450 regular or 1125 trophy. And you have the Lava Devil Fish, which is the uncommon variant, and that sells for 565 regular or 1410 for the trophy variant. Then you have the Forsaken Devil Fish. That is the super duper awesome rare variant that sells for 4,500 regular and 11,250 for the trophy variant. And then finally you have the night variant that sells for 450 regular or 1,125 for the trophy. Yeah, the, these fish almost made me rage as much as uh, Stormfish. <sighs> It's, just, it's, it's, it's annoying, it's a, it's a hard life. But next up, we're go ooh, we'll do Wreckers, we'll do Wreckers next. Okay, so Wreckers, they're pretty straightforward until you want to get the Storm variant of the Wreckers. So th this, is, this, is, these are, this is the single most annoying fish. As a whole, they're okay, but the Black Cloud Wrecker as, as a single fish is the most annoying thing on earth to try and catch. So anyway, I'm going to explain the variants and explain what you can do to catch the Storm variant. So there's five variants, again, I bet you guessed that. Anyway, so there's the Rose Wrecker, which sells for 565 regular or 1,410 for the trophy. You've got the Sun Wrecker, which sells for 675 for the regular and 1,690 for the trophy. Then you have the Black Cloud Wrecker, which is the Storm variant, which sells for 790 regular or 1,975 for the trophy. Now the Snow Wrecker, that sells for 5,625 or 14,065. So it's the second most lucrative fish in the game, the rare variant. And then the Moon Wrecker, which is just the night variant, sells for 675 or 1,690. Now to find the Black Cloud Wrecker, there is a really, really good website called Mermaid's Lullaby and it literally gives you a forecast of the storm, of where the storm's going to be and what it's going to do. Because if you didn't know, the storm in Sea of Thieves has a set path for every single server, it's the same for each server, so is the time and whatnot. Unlike other games like GTA and stuff where it'd be different depending on the server. So yeah, if you want to go to the storm, I'll leave a link below. Look for the Mermaid's Lullaby, look for the storm for forecast and look for shipwrecks along that route of the storm it'll tell you what time the storm's going to be where so it's a really 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 good really good uh, website to look for and i also i pr preach it when looking for stormfish because oh it's it, stormfish is the most time consuming fish on earth as you'll come to see so anyway second to last we have battle gills which which is yeah, relatively easy so battle gills are People, people are really like apprehensive to fish for battle gills, but I, I don't really know why. They're really simple, especially if you just find an ordinary skull fort. So I'm going to explain what you need to do. So basically, a battle gill will spawn either an active skelly ship, whether a galleon or a sloop, an active fleet, whether that's a normal fleet or a fleet of fortune, an active skull fort or fort of fortune, or the fort of the damned. Uh, if, if you want to be brave, you can do a Fort of the Damned, but I wouldn't recommend that. I'd just go to your plain old, simple, standard 2018 Skull Fort and then just fish, because that's the easiest way to put it. And if you're in at a normal Skull Fort, you don't have an emissary raise. No one's really going to f*** with you. And if they do, the fish are in your inventory at the end of the day. So anyway, let's go over the types of Battle Gills. So there is the Jade Battle Gill, which is the base variant which sells for 565 regular or 1410 for the trophy. You have the Sky Battle Gill, which is the common variant, which sells for 675 regular or 1690 for the trophy. You have the Rum Battle Gill, which sells for 790 for the regular and 1975 for the trophy. Then you have the Sand Battle Gill, which sells for 5625 for the regular and 14,065 for the trophy. Then you have the Bittersweet Battle Gill, which is the Night variant, which sells for 675 regular and 1690 for the cooked trophy even sorry 
I'm away with the fairies. So yeah, battle gills are pretty straightforward. They require grubs to catch them, you know, them little white worms. So yeah, it's pr pretty simple. Uh, just make sure you go to a skull fort. They don't, they don't go to uh, ghost fleets or ash and winds. So yeah, make sure it's skull fort or skeleton ship, and you should be good. Oh, we've got stormfish next. My favourite. So stormfish, they are the most annoying fish in the entire game. As you can guess by the name, you have to be in the storm to catch them. And there's, believe it or not, five different variants. So we have the ancient stormfish, which spawns in the ancient isles. You have the shore stormfish, which starts uh, spawns in the shores of plenty, obviously. The wild stormfish that spawns in the wilds. Now these all sell for 675 for the regular, or 1690 for the trophy. And I'm gonna tell you the night variant first, which is the Twilight Stormfish, which sells for 675 regular and 1690 for the trophy. And now it hurts me to say this: the Shadow Stormfish, the regular, sells for 6750, and the trophy sells for 16875. And the rest of them, apart from the Shadow Stormfish, should be self-explanatory of where to catch them in the select region. But then there is the rare variant. <sighs> this, this, it hurts me talking about it. I've broken my chair over this fish. So, they're really rare to spawn, but the most effectively caught at the Sea Dog Tavern or the Uncharted Island on N13 on the map. That's where I nearly caught mine. I haven't caught one yet. I had a trophy one at the end of my rod. And it, it, it just... It, I got struck by lightning. It hurts me talking about it. But anyway, that's all from your boy, Top Dog Rowley or Rowley Dog. Check out the socials and my second channel. Link's free in the description below. And uh, yeah, feel free to subscribe. And if you made it this far into the video, comment... Uh, what can you comment? Comment Monster Energy is the second best energy drink. I don't know. Just comment something funny. You you guys will just... Comment, comment Makeup Palette. Comment Makeup Palette, okay? See you there, guys. Sorry for the rambunctious outro. I'm just... It hurts talking about that Shadow Stormfish. It really does. Um.